My name is Maureen McGuire. I am from the north of Ireland. Um, I won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1976 for our work in Northern Ireland to help bring a peace process in our country which was suffered tremendously for, from violence. So uh, what were the major milestones if you look back uh, during this peace process? How did Ireland achieve peace finally? Well, Ireland is um, a divided country and in the north of Ireland we also have a divided community because we have many different ethnic groups in the north. So when the recent troubles started um, with the civil rights movement in the mid-60s calling for basic civil uh, rights it was a very important movement. Uh, unfortunately, violence erupted and we then found ourselves in an ongoing cycle of violence from rebels wanting a united Ireland, which the majority of people were not asking from, for, from people using the gun for their own political aims from state violence, which was trying through uh, illegal means to end the conflict. So we found ourselves in a vicious circle of violence with many people dying and on the brink of civil war. And in 1976, a terrible thing happened. My sister's three young children were killed in a clash between the Irish Republican Army and the British Army. And another young IRA man was killed. So in the course of just a few, a short time, four young people died. So this was a tipping point, if you want, because every day people were dying. So myself and some friends called on the people to come out and to organize for peace for a non-violent, peaceful solution to our conflict. So, um, that was the start of the peace people. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, we'll do something and then finally to get out there. I mean, it's, you had a reason, as you said, but what then when you walked out there and when you finally started to act, what happened then? What were the major things? What, what made the breakthrough? Well, I think that there had been a build-up within the community as a result of everyday violence and death and explosions and our, our country was being destroyed. And people felt very frustrated, very fearful. They didn't really know where to turn or what to do. It seemed to be no one was capable of helping stop the violence and finding a solution. So the t when we called for people to come out onto the streets, thousands and thousands of people marched in the streets in Northern Ireland, in the South of Ireland, in other countries. And we realised that people felt exactly like us. The vast majority of people didn't want violence. They wanted a peaceful solution. Uh, and so it was trying to, if you want, mobilize and organize that tremendous desire for peace that was already there in the community. And that was our great challenge. How do, you, how do you mobilize this great desire for peace? Cement it, if you want, in the, in the ground so that people understood one rally doesn't bring peace, one peace conference doesn't bring peace, but it is an ongoing process. So how does this entire thing about the Nobel Peace Prize change your life? Well, it was a great honour for me to uh, be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize together with my colleague Betty Williams because there were two of us, two women and one, one man and, uh, who initiated the peace movement. 
so it was it helped tremendously because we accepted it on behalf of the people of North Farland who had worked so hard for their peace. But also it was, um, it opened doors, if you want, that w people we needed to go to to speak about the peace process and were, were available to us. Um, so it has been a great opportunity to both open doors, but also a great opportunity to work for peace. So today it's almost 40 years later, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, we're still working in the peace process. We are on our way. We are sitting right now in Tehran, uh, waiting actually for our plane going to Syria on a peace pilgrimage. What has changed in the last 40 years? I think that, well, much has changed in the last 40 years. Uh, in Northern Ireland, we have a devolved government, a power sharing executive. We've come a long, long way. We have a beautiful, peaceful city. So much has changed for us in Northern Ireland. Peace works, non-violent solution to very deep ethnic conflict does work. We are proof of that. Um, now in saying that we have a perfect society, we go on till the day we die working to build relationships in, in, in our own country and that takes our life too. But I think it's important that I feel that the human family is rejecting violence. The human family is rejecting war. And the human family is saying non-violent conflict resolution, peace. Uh, particularly young people. Young people all around the world, every country have gone to. And I've traveled Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, Congo, many countries. And everywhere people say, we want peace, we want human rights, we want justice, but we want to do it through conflict resolution, not through nuclear weapons and war and militarism. So I think that turning point is in the world today and we've got to work for that, particularly young people. So we are like 40 people today going to Iran on a peace pilgrimage, uh, going to Syria, sorry, uh, on a peace pilgrimage. What do you think, like, 40 people can achieve? Oh, uh, uh, one person who really works from a pure motive, which is to love and to help other people. And if your motive is pure, anything you do will be powerful because you're spreading love. And love is the greatest power in the world today. So just starting with that sense of love, love yourself, believe in yourself because you are special, you are beautiful, you are powerful, and love around you, your family and your friends, deepen your friendships, because family and friends in these hard times will sustain you and bring you great joy mm -hmm. and happiness. To deepen your friendships and your circle of friends and reach out as far as you can reach to the outside world in sharing the values of the sanctity of life, uh, the kindness, compassion, mercy, forgiveness. These are the values the world ne needs today and sing and dance. I am a grandmother now. I have five grown-up children and I have six grandchildren and my grandchildren and my husband and my family are my greatest joy. I am so, so blessed. But I also feel that the world, and particularly the children, are my children. I care for the children in Syria who are suffering so much. I care for the little children in Israel who are frightened and suffering. You see, fear is driving so much of negativity in our world today. Fear of each other, fear of the unknown. We must conquer our fear and reach out. Go beyond your security zone and reach out to people. And that will change the world. Uh, you said this was your first time in Iran. Uh, we spent now almost a week here. How was it? It was a wonderful experience, truly really beautiful. 
we got a great reception from people here. Even, even going out and walking along the streets, people were offering us tea and welcoming us to their country. Um, it's culturally very, very beautiful. It's very safe to be in here in Iran. You can walk the streets with absolutely no sense of insecurity or fear. Uh, no violence, out at night, beautiful. So, and it is a very spiritual place. Uh, and the young people are wonderful. And they want to meet, they want to meet people from, from the West. Um, understanding that they've been cut off from the world and now they're opening up to the world. So they are very interested in knowing what the world outside is like. Of course they can read it on the internet, but to actually meet people is a wonderful experience. And you know, whenever we spoke to some young women here in Iran, they shared their anxiousness and their fear of the West, that they would be attacked. They have a fear of that. And that fear is a very real fear. Um, so it's important that, that uh, you come to Iran and make friends and that things open up here in Iran so that they too can travel as much as possible to make friends around the world. So my very last question is, we just heard that our plane is leaving tonight at 7 in Syria. Uh, you've been to Syria before during wartime. How would you describe the situation there? Well. The situation, I was there last April, uh, um, the situation is that there is tremendous suffering in Syria. Um, many people have died, killed, refugees have fled into surrounding countries. There is a proxy war going on in Syria, outside interference in the affairs of the Syrian country. There is also a need within Syria for reform in the country itself. There's great hope for Syria because many people, groups like the Musalaha and others, peace, are working on peace and reconciliation. And they believe they can solve the Syrian crisis by working together themselves, go forward and have elections, which is the right of the Syrian people, choose who their leaders are, and solve their problems without an outside interference. And it's important we respect the wishes of the Syrian people. Within Syria itself, in some places we visited, it was very, very beautiful. We have to remember, you know, that places like Syria are the cradle of civilization. That's important to remember that. But they're also because of the last three years of uh, violence, much destruction. But the Syrian people can rebuild their country and I have great hope for the future of Syria. Thank you. Thank you very much.